Oh yeah, we have laws. <laughs> they just don't care about the laws, actually. Uh, and the laws apply to some and not others. And, and that's really why the system is so broken. Because if there is no more respect for some of those fundamental laws, then we are totally lawless. We, we are, you know, uh, Mariam said it, I said it a few days ago in an article. I said we become completely lawless. It's meaningless. The laws have become meaningless to them. Um, and they're the ones running the country. The people who do disrespect the laws in our country are the ones running the country. Why do you think we're in the mess that we are? <laughs> so, uh, apart from many other reasons, but your first point, which is uh, whether, uh, sorry, what was, uh, whether Najib, um, if he remains and, and, and nothing changes, uh, what will happen? Uh, my, my own view is that uh, it's a little bit like letting the genie out of the bottle, okay? Um, once it's out of the bottle, it's going to be difficult to put it back in. And I think that's reflective of the feelings of the Malaysian people. They're not going to bottle it up anymore. That's how I feel. And I think um, people realize that even with the huge numbers, it's, it may not result in him stepping down. Uh, although he should take it as Maria has said, that it, it's, a, it's a vote of no confidence you know, by the people, which I think, and, and I think she put it very well. Um, so, you know, if they're not embarrassed enough to step down after that, that's, uh, unfortunately, a lot of our leaders don't get embarrassed very easily. That's, that's the problem. Um, so, uh, so I think people, I don't think people will give up. That's my answer to your question. Okay. And that's why I have hope. Uh, and I think there's a lot of hope and the hope lies in the people. It is unbelievable, okay, what Malaysians are, are capable of, what they're prepared to do. And it is unbelievable how much they love the country, actually. If only our leaders would know that. I mean, if only they would come down and walk with us on, uh, on Bursay 4. Number one, they will feel the empowerment. But number two, they will realize and see firsthand how much people really love the country. And that's, that's the part that I, I, I feel sad that they're going to miss. And I'm hoping these UMNO members who are going to join us will realize, actually, that Bursi has never been the enemy of the government or enemies or whatever it is. They're just a bunch of people who are really, really upset about what's going on and who want change. So, of course, there's hope. I have a lot of hope because of the people, not because of our leaders, um, but because... The people are good people, actually. They know when lines are crossed. They know when the government has acted beyond the bounds of decency. They don't like it one bit. I mean, that whole thing about Maria pouring red paint on her. I mean, that's to me, actually, that's a, the, the police should act. That's intimidation. The police should act. But I know they won't. Uh, and, and coming to your, your point about lawless, now that I've answered your question, the lawlessness point. I remember when the, the people were doing things outside my house and so on, and I lodged police reports about death threats and so on. I knew nothing would be done. And that is a terrible feeling to have. For a citizen to know that the police are not going to do anything to help you. Um, and and I, I know when I was hauled in and I was stayed overnight at the police station and, and all that, and they took a statement, they just do that to humiliate you. Um, I resisted and I refused to go to jail. To, they were going to send me off to Jinjiang and I refused. So they let me stay in a room, which is good, because I made such a fuss. But they hauled off uh, Anthony Lok and, and Arul to Jinjiang. The next morning I see them in court. And what do they do? They ask for four days remand. And all it was was I took part in the May Day protest. And they said, oh, you said Hiduk Rayat, by the way, that's seditious as well. They said, and I said two or three other things, and that for them was sedition. And for that, they asked, they applied for four days Ruman. Okay? And when I walked in there, I saw Arul and um, Anthony Lok in there. I think it was purple, actually, this purple when you're in Ruman. 
purple no slippers you know doing their <laughs> frodo baggins look okay <laughs> and and you know and i was thinking this is just to humiliate but the scary part is when they applied for the four days what if they get the four days you see so so what i'm saying is this that the trust in the police is whittling down i mean it's it's, it's they they whittling it down themselves actually if and i know there are a lot of good policemen and i've met them they're the ones who have to carry out these ridiculous orders okay and and they don't many of them don't like doing it so but what they don't realize the police force uh, the the leaders in the police force is when they do this they have shooting their own foot they are like they like credibility and we are living in a country where you're not sure whether um if you are unfairly arrested or whatever it is you you don't know what's going to happen next whereas in a in a in a lawful system whether it's not lawless you will know whether you are going to whether you're capable of being arrested on this whether you whatever it won't happen but you don't know that in malaysia and you don't know that when you call them and say look i'm being threatened you they will that they will protect you you don't know that anymore so so what's the point in having a police force like that whom you cannot count on so to me that is the tragedy actually where the lawlessness and the police force are concerned but as i say is not all the police there are many of them who are very good who are ready to do their jobs it's the orders they're getting that's where that's where the problem lies